Hi guys, and in this episode of Simplify OpenTX, we look at how to have a flight timer that automatically resets when you change your batteries. Let's go. On one of my videos about logical switches, I got a question from Richard Adams about how to set up a logical switch system that will automatically reset your flight timer when you unplug your battery. He keeps forgetting to do it with a switch. I keep forgetting to do it with a switch. So I thought, yeah, there's got, there's got to be a way of doing this. So what I've got is a way that we can do it. Well, actually two ways that we can do it. The first is for a system where you haven't got telemetry. So this could potentially be some of the older D type receivers or the L9R, for example. And the other way is for receivers that have got some sort of telemetry. This doesn't have to be smart port. This can be you know, basic old school analog telemetry, as long as you've got RSSI. So stuff like a D4R2, it will still work. So I'm going to open up the OpenTX model. This at the moment is just a basic four channel model. The only thing that I've got on there is the ultimate arm switch from my previous tutorial so I'll put a link up to that if you want to check that out but as you can see other than the logical switches at the bottom for, and the special functions for the arming switch there's nothing in this whatsoever so the first thing that we're going to have a look at is setting up the actual timer itself which is a pretty simple thing to do all you do I'm going to call this one I don't know lipo you call it bat or whatever and i'm going to set this to three minutes just because i don't know that's what i get out of my riot so the way i have mine set up is to use throttle percentage so if you don't know how that works it literally takes how much throttle you're inputting to actually calculate the countdown of the time so if you're at full throttle it'll count down one second every second if you're at 50 percent throttle it will only count down one second every two seconds so it's it's um yeah it's dependent on how much throttle you're inputting as to how quickly the time counts down that way i find you get a more accurate amount of power left in your battery when you get down so i can have a mixed flight still come down with about 3.6 3.7 volts so that's the way i use we could have haptic feedback we could have minute call whatever we can set that all here the other thing that i'm going to do is i'm actually going to change the throttle source and i'll show you why first so if i simulate we can see here logical switch 64 isn't active so i'll get rid of that for the second um so we're not actually armed we're disarmed but if i raise the throttle you'll see that the timer is still counting down even though we're disarmed so you know the plane's not flying so it's not really what we want so what i can do is if we change the throttle source to channel three. Now, if you're using anything other than AETR um, for your channel order, you will need to use a different channel. It needs to be your throttle channel. So if you look in mixes, whatever your throttle is on, then that's what you put in here. It doesn't, even though it's, it says channel three, it doesn't, it's not really the output. It's, it takes it from the mix rather than the output. So if you have to reverse it in the output, that's absolutely fine. It will still work the cor correct way around at this point. I've tested that, so that's all good. What will happen now if I simulate? Again, I'll drag that out of the way. You can see we're back at three minutes because it's a new flight. The you know, transmitter's only just been turned on effectively. But if I raise the throttle up, we're still disarmed the timer isn't counting down. So I'll lower it so I can arm. We're armed, I'll raise the throttle, and it starts counting down. So, and if I disarm, it will stop counting down. As, it's, as I say, it's based on this channel value here in the mix. So it's at minus 100, so it's not counting. And I can actually, if you're worried about a reversing thing, I'll show you. 
just to double check. So we can reverse the direction of the throttle. So now full throttle is no throttle. So I need to put it there to arm it. Yeah, because what we want, the stick needs to work the same way. So as you can see, the arming still works fine. If it won't arm unless the stick is all the way down. And then when we arm it, you'll see our output channel is all the way up. So because our ESC is effectively reversed in this example, that's it. You know, what the ESC wants for 100%, but our throttle stick and our throttle mixer is all the same. And again, once I disarm, it will put that to 100%, but that's what the ESC is expecting for zero throttle in this example. So you can see that's why that arming switch with the curve works better on the input and also how this will not affect your outputs if you do need to reverse your throttle. So we'll put that back the right way around so we won't confuse anything further. So the next thing that we want to do is have a look at the actual reset itself. So this is really, really simple. And the, the first one is even simpler. So what we're gonna do is we're just literally gonna check whether we're armed or not. So if you're literally just using a switch, you can set this to your switch disarm position. But as I say, you're better off with a proper arming mechanism so you, you can check things like your throttles low, all that sort of good stuff, especially if you haven't got a flight controller. So what we have is our, our logical switch hit number 64. If that's active, we're armed. If it's not active, we're disarmed. So what I'm going to do is up here, I'm going to say not 64, which means we're disarmed. But because we could accidentally disarm in flight, um, what we want to do is make sure that we're disarmed long enough where we know we've pulled the battery out. So in the real world, I'm going to set, I would set this to 20 seconds. But because I don't really want to wait that long in the demo, I'm sure you don't want to either. I'm going to set it to five seconds. I really need to stop pressing enter. So what we also need to do is set the duration just to 0.1 of a second, because all we literally want this to do is trigger the reset of the timer, which to do that, we go into logic into special functions. We set that up on logical switch one. And all we're going to do is go down to reset timer one active. So that's it. As soon as as soon as we disarm, which we're in a disarm state now, it will just flash up after five seconds. You may not even catch it, but that will reset the timer. So to show show it working, let's get some time. Go for a little flight. So we've landed, disarm the model. This will be five seconds, but 20 seconds will pass. And then the timer will automatically reset. So that's great, that works on disarm. But what if you wanted to completely avoid the accidental stuff altogether? So if you've got any telemetry based receiver whatsoever, this one's set for S port, but it could, as I say, it just needs to be any telemetry where you get back RSSI which as I say I've, I've tested this on a D4R2 and it works absolutely fine so older receivers are not a problem X receivers are not a problem yeah anything modern will have it it's and a lot of the older stuff will have it too so all we need as I say is RSSI and to get this working it's really really simple again all we're going to do is in this and condition is add not, so it needs the exclamation point in front, RSSI. So now, not only does it need to be disarmed, it also needs to have no RSSI. In older versions of OpenTX, I can't remember when they changed it, I think it was around 2.1.9, 2 there was a different way of doing this, but going forward from then, 
so we're on what 2.3.9 now so it's like two sub versions ago it's quite a long time ago this is the way to do it so we're actually if there's no data or when when sorry i'm not explaining this very well in the older versions if you lost telemetry it would just set uh, the RSSI to like zero dBm, for example, it would set everything to zero. Since 2.1.9, it actually holds the value when it last had telemetry, which, to be honest, is much more useful for things like, um, you know, GPS coordinates. If you lose your model, you don't lose your GPS coordinate or last known GPS coordinates when your battery goes out or your signal goes out. So you can check that against what's on your transmitter because you can put it on like a page and stuff but what it does do is it flags that the telemetry sensor is false so even though it will show the value there's a flag on the sensor to say that it's not actually receiving data and that's what we're checking for here so if we just used for example in the old way of doing it you'd have a less than you'd set it to your rssi and you'd say if it's less than say 5 dB, you've got no telemetry. This doesn't work anymore because when your battery goes, it will still say like 80 dB or whatever it was last on. But when you check whether the telemetry sensor itself is true or false, in this scenario, it will, it will work properly. So we can clear that. And as you see, that's all we need to do. So I can simulate that. So at the moment, we've uh, because simulation is on, we've actually got um, our RSSI. So can I show that on screen? Source RSSI. All right. So let's see if that will that will show us anywhere. Yeah. So we can see our RSSI there. We're on seventy five dB. So we've got 75% of signal. If I switch off telemetry, that should disappear. I've tested this and it does work. But yeah, you can, you can see the antennas disappearing and reappearing. So if we arm, we go for a flight. And then we land and we disarm we unplug the battery which causes telemetry to go and then what should happen in about five seconds that should flash up and the telemetry resets so there you go we plug a new battery in we get our telemetry back we arm we go for another flight land disarm and all the time the battery is plugged in it won't reset so this is a better way of doing it than just the disarm because potentially say you go for a short flight land quickly i don't know maybe you've got a, an overpassing airplane or something so you land disarm while you're on the runway and then you say right i can it's clear i can take off again and it will go it will start counting down from where you left off so it won't actually reset until it knows that the battery has been disconnected whereas if it's purely based on the arming switch as i say you there could be a situation where you legitimately land disarm and then want to carry on flying the same pack so uh, this way unless you physically unplug that battery which we've just done it won't reset the timer so that's that's the way i would personally do this so again it's it's only one extra uh, variable it's a single line of code so it's really quick and same uh, straightforward so i hope you guys found that useful if you did i'd really appreciate a thumbs up um, and a subscription to the channel that really helps I've, I've just gone over 300 subscribers which compared to a lot of other people is tiny but i'm really happy about getting 300 so thank you very much guys um if you click the notification bell icon you'll get um notifications surprisingly about when new videos come out and if you didn't find it useful um you could leave a thumbs down but if you do please leave a comment as to what i can do to improve things and 
yeah thank you guys for watching have great time flying fly your models like you stole them and i'll see you on the next one thanks guys and thanks richard for the question bye